Hi, so blowing up water. Quite a lot of work has been done on blowing up water generally around the internet. Um, Panacea Bocaf have a really good PDF with um, various bits and pieces that have been done, starting with uh, Shaka Ganja and going all the way through. Go to Look has done some good work on it, and, and, and there's lots of really good bits and pieces available. Uh, essentially, I think it started with the water car enthusiasts all trying to run a car on water. Uh, and there's a great paper by a guy called Peter Granow, which um, shows a, a setup very similar to the one I used. Um, and talks about the anomalous energy uh, involved in these water discharges. So uh, a quick sort of internet search will bring up certainly lots of information. Now a lot of the circuits use a 12 volt battery that they put through an inverter and then use a long chain of diodes uh, and they seem relatively complicated. Now the circuit I used was uh, this one. Hopefully you can see, yep there we go. And that's a really simple circuit as you can see. So the bits and pieces are mostly taken out of a, a microwave oven tra and the um, transformer being the important bit and the um, microwave oven capacitors being the other one. Now that's that bit there was the safety switch I used. That bit's just plugged into the mains. There's the microwave oven transformer and you can see the capacitor in the series. Now I used four of them because I also wanted to blow up a piece of wire and do the um, paralytic electrolysis. So I used four capacitors in parallel. If you put them um, in uh, banks of parallel series, then it's going to up the voltage. So if I used two in series and put those two in series in parallel, I'd double the voltage that I could get out of it. Now, and I'm probably going to do that, actually, to see what happens. Uh, just out of interest, really. So uh, a little bit more detail on the actual setup that we used. Ah, there's the microwave oven transformer. And as you can see, it's split into two coils. You've got this rather heavy-duty, thicker coil there. And then you have this much, much thinner coil, or rather, um, a coil made out of thinner wire. That's your input coil, the thick one there, and these are the ones that go to the mains. And this one is actually used for driving something else. Uh, I didn't bother chopping it off, because very often they're, they're useful to do things like a tickler coil with. On this side of it, where the output is, as you can see, it's very much thinner and it only has one prong. The other output is taken straight to the big old laminated iron block. Uh, and that's going to be your goal. That is the ground. And then that's what I used as the ground and then attached that one there. And like I said, the capacitors really are, are just these things. You get them out of, out of a microwave. They're um, 2 kilovolts. So not particularly large capacitors, uh, and they don't have a particularly high capacitance. So there's not that much uh, energy that's actually being stored on those. This is 0.9 microfarads at 2.1 kilovolts, uh, and I had four of those. So um, not that much really. Uh, I think I might actually make some heavy duty capacitors as well, and, and then we'll be able to get a bit more sort of um, oomph out of the whole setup. That was basically all I used. And then this, this was the um, the main piece that you saw, and we'll just disassemble that for you. It's just a stand, uh, and then as you can see, there's the attaching wires. Just pull that to pieces for you. All that is is a half inch brass fitting from the plumbing store and with a bit of wire soldered to it, and that went to one end of the capacitors. Um, that is a motorbike spark plug, it's a B6HS, HS, sorry, uh, and that's a um, quarter inch to half inch plumbing fitting that I just jammed the um, spark plug in there. It's jammed in pretty tight so I can't get it off easily, but uh, I, I jammed it in there and as you can see that's just the end of the spark plug there. So that's the uh, equipment that I used if you feel like replicating this. to do this job and what I'm probably going to do um, tomorrow is uh, use some carbon rods. So I quite liked the uh, electrolysis experiment I did at the end of the last video but it was pretty vicious on the little two steel bolts that I used. Now um, there's a good guy, his name comes to me, ah Nordin, Jean Nordin uh, and he does quite a few experiments on things called the bingo fuel reactor uh, and it's very similar again to the bingo fuel reactor, although he's using a timing circuit. The um, spark gap 
actually acts as its own timing circuit. Um, there's a time taken for the capacitors to charge up sufficiently that the, um, the voltage is sufficient rather so that the spark jumps the gap and that, that takes a period of time. The um, AC input is obviously at 50 hertz but um, the, the time of the spark gap is actually different to the AC input and that's because uh, once the voltage is reached it's going to jump however long it takes to, take to reach that voltage and it'll reach that voltage sooner than the 50 hertz turnover that you get from a main supply. Um, the spark gap was set at 0 0.015 inches which is you know, pretty, pretty narrow but then you've only got a couple of kilovolts so a couple of kilovolts isn't going to jump that big a spark gap. One of the reasons why if you want to up the voltage you can actually open up that gap a bit more as well because it will still jump it. Um, now I used um, deionized water so it was just plain old ordinary water. Uh, it strikes me that sticking a bit of salt in there um, so that you get a, an ion path might be a good idea, particularly as we're separating the, um, the sparking element from the actual um, paralytic, um, sorry I say that, uh, from the actual plasma electrolysis, because we're using the spark the timing switch to dump that energy in, then um, a little bit of ionisation in the water is actually going, I think, to help it. But again, it's something to experiment with and, and, and to see what happens. But using the spark in that manner means um, it looks like we can get away without using whole chains of, of actually relatively sensitive diodes, but the thing is a bit more robust and we can put a bit more energy in there and it um, doesn't really look as gentle as some of the circuits that I've actually had a look at. So um, I'm going to play around with that a bit more and, and see if we can turn this thing into a plasma torch, which will be um, uh, quite a bit of fun really. So watch this space and um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me a comment or a line or a message. Always happy to discuss uh, what I'm doing and always happy to hear from people who are doing things in, um, in Silver Lane. So thank you very much.